I don't even know where to begin. Hello folks, it's me again. Welcome back to Musical Theater Mondays. I am so happy you came back. I'm touched, I am pleased, I am so grateful. So last week, we talked about what was musical theater in general, which looking back at the footage while I was editing the video, I kind of realized that I never really said it out loud what musical theater was. So let's just say that this is like part two of what is musical theater, which will include our journey looking at the first musical in history, which was, drum roll please, The Black Crook. Before we go into talking about the plot, because <laughs> it's a plot, we need to talk about a little bit of the background about how the Black Crook came to be. Because it didn't come into, you know, like Rogers and Hammerstein, Gershwin Brothers kind of thing, being like, let's put on a musical. It's more like, hey, you're using a theater and we kind of want to use it. Can we bring in our peeps too and just like, let me explain. Picture it, New York, 1866. These two guys named Henry C. Jarrett and Henry Palmer, we'll just call them the Henry brothers moving forward. They are these producing buddies and they had this idea that they wanted to import European novelty acts to America. What they really liked about European shows is that they had grand spectacle, like super extravagant. If you wanted something similar to it, it would basically be like the Ziegfeld Follies. So they saw this one French show in London and they were so inspired by it that they basically wanted to make some form of that show and bring it to America. They purchased some of the set pieces as well as getting a dance troupe from Paris. They were hoping to put up this production in New York at the New York Academy of Music, but it unfortunately burnt down that summer of 1866. It's not puzzle time. So that kind of put a damper on plans. Meanwhile, Charles M. Barras made an agreement with William Wheatley, who was the manager of Niblo's Garden on Broadway to perform a hundred performances of his play called The Black Crook. This was supposed to be a acting vehicle for him and his wife to be in. So after this agreement was made, the Henry brothers went to Wheatley to try to get the same theater. But of course Wheatley was like, sorry bros, Charlie's got it. Now I'm not quite sure who had like the ding light bulb moment to mesh these peeps together, but they somehow ended up making an agreement where the Henry brothers will now be producers for the Black Crook and they were going to make it into a musical extravaganza. And from what it sounds like, it looks like Barris was kind of like pushed to the wayside and the Henry brothers kind of just did their thing and did what they wanted to, but the only difference is that they now have a script to go off of. In terms of the music, Thomas Baker was the music director and all of the music was basically adapted from music that was popular during the time as well as new works that were made for the story specifically. The show was quite a success. It actually ran for 474 performances, which was quite a feat during that day. And it was also known for how scantily clad their dancers were, which is like, <laughs> which now brings us to what we all came for, the plot. If you read the synopsis, just the synopsis on Wikipedia, for example, it actually sounds like it's a pretty decent show. Like it's pretty, you know, cut to the chase, very linear. I'm here to tell you that is wrong. Before I even started filming this series, the one thing that I really want to make sure is that if I was going to be covering any sort of topic, I want to make sure that I knew my shit. So I read the script. This is 62 pages of my life that I will never get back. What's interesting with this, it doesn't have all of the music. I believe the only music that they had in here was just the original music. They didn't have any of the added music from the time. I'm slowly losing my mind because I am not ready to tell you about this plot. But before I go into this, they end up adding like a couple of the reviews back here. The New York Times claimed decidedly the vent of this spectacular age. The New York Times also said that it was quote, 
trashy. Reverend Charles B. Smith from the New York Herald said, Let husbands and parents and guardians who value the moral of their wives, their daughters, and their wards bear a watchful eye and keep them out of the walls of nimbles during the reign of the Black Crook. So let's get into it. Act 1, Scene 1. We start at Barbara's cottage. Barbara is the foster mother to this girl named Amina, who is madly loved by this dude named Rodolfe. He's a part artist, which is like, you know, relatable. And he wants to marry Amina, but of course he's poor as fuck. So he needs to get money. How is he gonna do that? By selling his artwork. Guess what doesn't happen? He doesn't get any money for his artwork. Womp, womp, womp. So while he was out during these travels, apparently Amina ran to this other dude named Count Wolfenstein. And due to just running into him one day, the next morning, he goes to the cottage and tells Barbara, Amina's foster mother, that he is madly in love with her and wants to marry her. To which Barbara was like, fuck yes, get me the fuck out of here, I wanna be rich. So there's this whole thing, Barbara sees Rodolfo and she's like, get the fuck out of here, this is really bad. And then these peeps exit and the villagers come in where we see Parline who are saying, oh, this is gonna be so great, we're gonna have a wedding, let's practice the dance. Next, Wolfenstein and Von Puffengrunts come in. Von Puffengrunts, who is now going to be abbreviated to Von Puff because I think that's brilliant. Von Puff falls in love with Barbara. So it's like, it's great. Everything's going great for Barbara. Gotta love Barbara. But somehow during all of this, all of this thing, all of the weird ballet practice and us witnessing Barbara fall in love with Von Puff, Rodolfe somehow sneaks into the cottage and tries to escape with Amina. Wolfenstein and everyone else sees this. Wolfenstein is pissed. He's like, you are going to jail. Bye, bitch. I'm gonna marry this woman. At the end of the first scene, Rodolfe does escape. But then in scene two, you see him getting captured by Wolfenstein's guards. Pointless. At one scene three, this is when we meet the guy known as the Black Crook. Herzog is this wizard, magic dude, evil guy who's kind of like lost his niche. He's kind of lost his pizzazz. He basically is like old news. And so he gets his assistant, Greppo, to go out with him during a big old thunderstorm. Now you think that you're gonna be following Herzog to the forest, right? Wrong. <laughs> We somehow change to an apartment in the capital of Wolfenstein to check up on Carline because, you know, we got to check in on Carline. Carline is saying, wow, there's a crazy storm, but everything is great on my end because now I'm going to be Amina's first maid, first lady or whatever it's called. I believe this is where she starts singing you naughty, naughty men because, I don't know. Act one, scene five. Yes, we're still in act one. We go back to Herzog and Greppo. It just gets super confusing. But Herzog basically tries to make this, tries to make us fail. And then during that, he ends up accidentally tr killing himself. And so he ends up making a deal with, I guess he's a god or a devil named Zamiel. And he says, if you can give me a sacrifice of a human once a year, we'll be chill. But if you miss that deadline for one of them, you're done, you're dead. He said, great, awesome, cool. And Samuel says, bring me Rodolfe. That was act one. Act two, you basically see Wolfenstein's bros locking up Rodolfe and Rodolfe is then visited by Herzog who's like, yo, I can help you out. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be great. Just go to this place. You'll find all this gold and you'll you'll be able to get your girl. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. We see another moment with Barbara, Carline, and Von Puff where Barbara's bitching that she's basically in the same room as the dogs are. It's great, super informative. Act two, scene three, Rodolfe and Greppo, forgot to mention Greppo is kind of like giving us like a handoff from Herzog being like, take this dude with you. Act two, scene four, this is where like the whole spectacle thing happens. And I have no idea what we're supposed to be looking at in terms of stage, but it sounds crazy. Like there's a lake and there's this dude named Dragonfin and he's like, oh my gosh, our girl is in trouble, but now she's not based on how the moon looks and stalacta 
Stalacta rises and was like, yo, I was a bird for a minute and was like about to be attacked by this snake thing. And she was saved by some random dude. I wonder who that is. And so due to that, she ends up bringing this guy back who happens to be Rodolfe and Greppo. And she was like, yo, thanks for saving my life. I want to return the favor to you. So here's this ring. And whenever you kiss this ring, I'm going to pop up and save your life, okay? Cool. It's great. It's great. We're at the end of Act 2. We're back at Wolfenstein's palace or whatever. Six months later. What? There's this ball. Everyone is wearing masks. It's super sexy and everything. Carlin and Grebo fall in love. Amina is reunited with Rodolphe. And then Von Puff and Wolfenstein realize that he's here and they try to kill him. But then he kisses the ring and Stalactica, Dragonfin, and all of her peeps are there to be like, no, nah, bitch, he good. And during that time, Rodolphe and Amina runs away. That's act three. Bing, bang, boom. I love it when scripts get it to the point. Act four, scene one. Again, six months later. Why? They, we end up seeing Barbara and Von Puff. Apparently they've been married and shocker, 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 they are miserable. Act four, scene two. We end up seeing Rodolphe, Greppo, and Amina out hunting, but then somehow they end up getting ambushed by Wolfenstein and Herzog and a, one of Wolfenstein's bros and kisses the ring and Stalactica pops up again. A little bit weird, but okay. I mean, he only saved your life once. You don't need to save his life twice. That's, that's just me. So then Rodolfi and Mina are like, oh yay, we're safe. And then Herzog is like, F this, I want them dead. And so he calls up Samuel being like, yo, help a brother out and help me get this dude to you. They try to get him in act four, scene four. <laughs> And surprise, surprise, Rudolf kisses his fucking ring again and Stalatka pops up with Dragonfin and all of her other bros. It's just like, I don't, uh, okay. We're so close, you guys, we're so close. At first scene five, we somehow get in a monologue with Grebo being like, oh, I'm so scared and I don't know what to do. I want to go home. Very informative. Act four, scene six is basically, we see Samuel and he's like, yo, I didn't get my human. Herzog, you're dead, goodbye. And we see him die in his parish in burning flames, finally. And then basically at the very end, we see everyone happily ever after Rodolfo and Amina gets married, Carlin and Grebo gets married. It's just, I'm done. So that is the black crook. That's what it is. It's. I'll just say it, it's trash. It's really bad. It's, there's just so many things. You can see that it was done in a rush. Now that I saw that it was in the midst of about to happen in 1866, and then this last minute edition with who, whoever the bros producing it and just trying to make it what they wanted to do originally. <laughs> now we have to hop back to this question. Is The Black Crook a musical? Now, when I was doing more research about this, I didn't realize that there was actually a huge split of what people believe to be the first musical and what not. Some people say that labeling the Black Crook as the first musical is kind of blasphemy and also insulting. Here's the thing, with the Black Crook, the reason why people consider it to be a musical and possibly the first musical is because when it comes to earlier renditions of plays with music, like operas, for example, when it came to dancing, the dancers just did that. It didn't incorporate dancers and actors, or it didn't have a dancer, for example, being one of the main roles. For example, Carline is a supportive role and also happens to be a dancer in it. Also around this time, a lot of things were changing. You know, transportation was being evolved. When it came to workplaces, things were being evolved. Families were being more involved. And so our more people were looking for more entertainment. Another reason why people consider it to be the first musical is due to its success. The fact that it had so many performances done. My opinion? I think we can definitely say The Black Crook was one of the first forms of musical theater. I don't know if we could really consider it to be the first musical, but the fact that it incorporated dance into its story to push along the plot and also had one of its supportive characters that was a dancer, was also an actor, like that's pretty big. That was a pretty big step because usually it was just singers, actors and dancers all separate and this just merged them all together which is pretty cool so what the fuck is musical theater it's a play that happens to have music and dance that forwards the plot that helps move the story forward well folks i hope you enjoyed this episode this was a 
doozy. I tried to do this more freestyle. I didn't really follow the script. I kind of just wung it. So let me know if you like this format or if you prefer me doing something that's more followed by a script. Any ideas or suggestions or critiques are appreciated in the comments. But remember, don't be a fun ruiner. If you have any requests on what you would like me to chit chat about, also leave that down in the comments. At this point, I'm kind of just going to go with the flow and do whatever the flippity floppity fish that I want. I'm not planning to go in order timeline wise. I'm just going to talk about whatever I feel like chit chatting about. I love you guys very much. May be happy, may be healthy, may be safe and at ease and free from harm. And I will see you guys next week.